Dang it, my toast is burnt. Come on, who moved the dial? If you have one of these basic toasters, you might have come across similar situations where you or somebody else you know might have moved the dial to say, I don't know, toast something frozen, and then they forget to move it back. When I put my regular bread in here, I get burnt toast. I know some people like burnt toast, but I prefer mine golden brown. Now, most humans have functioning olfactory systems, which means that many people, myself included, can smell the difference between bread, toast, and, well, burnt toast. I think we can construct a device that will be able to detect when the bread is at that perfect golden doneness of toast, and then trigger the lever system to end the cooking process, or rather the toasting process, to give us perfect toast every time. I'm going to approach this project in five stages. First, I'm going to make a device that records gas sensor data from the toasting process. Next, I'll train a machine learning model using that gas data to estimate the time until the toast is burnt. Then I'll hack a toaster so that a microcontroller can automatically cancel the toasting process. After that, to get the doneness that is perfect for me, I need to determine how many seconds before the toast is burnt to stop toasting. And finally, we get to test with different types of bread. The idea for this project came from Benjamin Kabe's artificial nose project where he uses a bunch of different gas sensors to classify different odors. I'm taking it a step further to see if I can detect doneness of toast based on odor data. I start with a piece of aluminum so I can mount all of the electronics and of course sand it down to make sure I don't cut myself. From there I need to drill some holes so that I can mount all of my sensors and then of course continuing to sand as needed. I'm using these Grove sensors, which I can mount to my plate using some nylon screws and standoffs. Once I'm done mounting everything into place, I can connect them using the Grove connectors to an I2C hub. From there, I'll run a cable to my WIO terminal. The sensors need to be kept above the toaster to avoid getting too hot. So to do that, I'm gonna build a structure using some coat hanger that I will clip and modify and attach to the plate. From there, it's just a matter of tying everything together and keeping it in place using some sculpting wire. It's not the prettiest construction, but you know what? It'll do as a prototype. From my previous project, I learned that I needed to continuously move air over the sensors or the gases would just accumulate. To do this, I'm going to attach a very small PC fan just below the sensors so that it blows air over them. With this, I mount everything together, connect it all up, and with that, I believe it is time to test. To collect data, I've got some gas sensors that are above the toaster, and the idea is that as things heat up, these gases rise, they will be collected by these sensors, that will send some raw data to this WIO terminal that then sends that data over to my laptop where I record it in a raw text file. To show this process, I have a piece of bread. Let's put this in here. I'm gonna start the process by clicking this button. It should say background, which means these sensors are just looking at ambient data. I'm going to start this and I will click it again to change it to the toasting mode. This process takes two to three minutes per slice and I'm recording the different modes because I'm hoping that can help me when I go to analyze the data, determine where in the process these different gases are changing. But for now, note that I'm doing this a bunch of times for different sizes or slices of bread, different types of bread. I'm avoiding bagels at the moment, trying to keep it basic. Let's just focus on one type of bread. But I am also collecting data from things starting at room temperature, things starting from the refrigerator, and frozen slices of bread as well because that will affect how long the cooking process takes, or rather the toasting process, I suppose. But once this is done, and the best way to look for this in order to determine if it's burnt right now is to kind of look at it and use my nose. And I keep checking on it. 
looking for that acrid scent of something burning. Almost. There we go. And I'm going to click this button to mark it as burnt. And I will let it continue for a little longer. Probably until it pops. And there we go. Ooh, that's hot. Yep, that is a burnt piece of toast. I will let this cool down, take it out, put a new piece of bread in, and continue the process until basically I'm out of bread. Let's take a look at one of the samples. I collected data in three different stages for each piece of toast and plotted the raw readings from the gas sensors. Blue is when I collected background or ambient data prior to toasting. Green is the readings during the toasting process, and red is when the toast was burnt. There doesn't appear to be any clear indication. I would have thought that, like, carbon dioxide would have gone up when it was burned, but it looks like it saturates pretty early here. I posted these findings to Twitter and said, hey, I'm not really sure that this gas data is giving me any sort of clear indication that burning is happening during the cooking process. And who, of course, but Benjamin Kabe himself responds with this tweet saying, hey, why don't you take a look at ammonia data? And here's a link to a paper showing that, sure enough, ammonia should spike whenever burning happens in cooking. So I guess that means I need to add an ammonia sensor. Ammonia sensors can be a little pricey, but these are the things we do in the name of science. This breakout board from Pololu is perfect for mounting the ammonia sensor with my other gas sensors. Here is the updated array of sensors that will attempt to smell the bread while it's toasting. Now that I've added the ammonia sensor, I have to redo the whole data collection process. So here we go. Let's start this in background. I will add a piece of toast and start toasting. One of the fun things about this project is I end up with a lot of toast. Now, some of these are obviously beyond repair, like I don't think I'm gonna be eating this one, but some of these I popped a little early, which is totally serviceable for something like a sandwich. I guess that means I'm having several sandwiches for dinner tonight. Let's look at another sample that now includes the ammonia data. If we scroll down, we can see ammonia here, but unfortunately, Unlike what we saw in that paper, there's no obvious spike whenever the burning happens. I'm hoping this is going to be good enough in conjunction with all the rest of the gas, temperature, and humidity data that will give us an idea of when burnt toast occurs. I created a dense neural network in Google Colab that takes in the sensor readings at each moment in time and attempts to predict the time remaining until the toast is burnt. However, it did not appear to be very accurate. Uh, it's not working. The plan was to take the raw readings from this and then send those to a dense neural network. So at one point in time, you send it to a dense neural network. That tries to predict how much time is remaining until it smells a burnt. It's a kind of an indication of the level of doneness of the toast. Unfortunately, when I tried to train the network, as you can see here, it's not training all that well. And I've tried different types of architectures. I've shuffled the data, what have you. It's simply not working. So. I need to do what any good machine learning practitioner would do, and that is first, get more data. The second is to try a different architecture. Since this is technically sequential data, rather than taking a single point in time from the sensors, I'm going to feed it into something like a recurrent neural network and see if that works a little better. Hmm, we'll see. I'm super grateful to have a few friends who are machine learning experts, namely Matt Kelsey and Dan Sitniyaki. They gave me some advice about a different type of model architecture and how to sample this so that it will work better. I did try a recurrent neural network. It worked, which is amazing, but they're not supported on microcontrollers, and I really wanted this to work on a WIO terminal. So what those guys did is they suggested I try a rolling window over time rather than just taking a single instance in time of the different gas channels. I tried this, and sure enough, it does work at least well enough, I think, to create a prototype. If you'd like to learn more about running neural networks on microcontrollers, 
check out my video series on tiny machine learning. Once I had an idea of what kind of machine learning model I wanted to use, I went ahead and put that in Edge Impulse. This allowed me to train my model, test it, and then deploy it very easily to an embedded system. In this case, I'm just using Arduino. And now, the fun part. I get to hack a toaster. Of course, there were a few security screws I needed to get through, probably voiding the warranty in the process, but I don't particularly care because this is an inexpensive toaster purchased exactly for this purpose. Once on the inside, I figured out which electrical nodes controlled the cancel button, and I wanted to look at the voltage for the LED to see if I could determine when the toaster was toasting. Knowing those, I tack soldered some wires to it, which you can see here, and those are going to be connected to the WIO terminal so I can programmatically sense when toasting is happening, and of course, I can cancel the process. With that, I fed the wires through the bottom of the enclosure, and of course, buttoned everything back up. The idea is that the WIO terminal collects data from those sensors and then uses these lines running to the toaster in order to control the toaster. Using some machine learning, we can figure out when that toasting process is complete and then pop that cancel button right at the exact moment. I ran all these wires to the WIO terminal and interestingly enough, I found out that I can't really control the cancel button directly, which means I needed to add one more component here. This is a MOSFET in open drain configuration, if you're curious, and connected to the WIO terminal for better control. Now that I have all the electronics ready to go, we need to figure out a decent threshold where to stop the toasting process. To do that, I'm gonna start toasting a piece of bread and keep an eye on this value here. Once I see that the toast is at that perfect doneness, the best I can figure by looking and smelling, I'm gonna stop it and then take a look at the number here. That should provide a decent threshold for us. I predict that this is going to be between 30 and 40. Remember that this is a number that is supposed to give us an estimate of whenever the machine learning model thinks the toast will be burnt. That's number of seconds until burnt. So 30 or 40 seconds until that burnt point is I think gonna give us a good toast value regardless of the starting temperature and the composition of the bread. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Let's stop it. Take a look. Okay, at about 40. Ooh, hot, 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 hot. All right, this is almost perfectly golden brown. It stopped at about 40. It looks like we have a little bit of uneven toasting going on. So the heating elements aren't exactly even, which is a problem that I can't fix with these inexpensive toasters. But this side looks really good. This side's a little more burnt than what I care. So 40, that makes me think we should stop it at like a 42 or 45. And that should hopefully give us the perfect doneness in any piece of toast. I've uploaded the new program to the WIO terminal and we no longer need the laptop. In fact, it's just providing power. All of the machine learning is now being done on the device itself. Safety first, just in case something goes wrong with this process. Here comes our first official test. Let's start this and hands off until it's done or it catches fire. All right. Oh, <laughs> it's perfect, it's perfect, look at this. The perfect piece of toast created by AI. Oh, how ridiculous is that? I love it. It's completely superfluous, but I completely love the fact that I have trained a machine learning model to toast bread based on smell, although, Temperature probably plays a decent role in that too, but I am very excited by the fact that this works. I'm gonna slide this over so it's out of the way of our next few tests here, but it's definitely still within reach. And I just pulled out a frozen piece of thin sliced bread. Now this is one of those multi-grain whole wheat deals that I find take a little longer to toast. And these are the kinds of things that would mess up the normal timer-based toasting process. So. 
Let's see how this thing does. All right, let's see how it performed. Not bad, not bad. Okay, so it's interesting. There's like a little burn spot here. It's not really that burn. It's just a little darker than the others. This reverse side, however, is absolutely perfect. I would say this works at automatically adjusting the timing in order to toast to that perfect doneness regardless of whether the toast comes from the countertop, the refrigerator, the freezer, and regardless of the slice and makeup of the bread. Like this is very thin slice, but it's a, you know, one of these whole grain multi-seed things that usually takes a lot longer to toast, but it's giving me the same toasting, more or less, give or take a little bit, as that white bread was doing. This is fantastic. I'm so excited this works. As you probably noticed, we've only been doing this with one piece of bread. The whole model was trained with just one piece of bread, just to try to keep things simple. So what that means, I am going to put in two pieces of bread, which I've never tested before, whether in training or during inference to see what will happen. Okay. Wait, what? It worked. No, no, it worked. Holy, what? <laughs> I can't believe that actually worked. Oh my goodness, I've never tested with two pieces before. Oh my God, it actually worked. There's like a little bit of browning over here. Okay, you can play with the threshold and I probably need more data, but whenever I use the timer with just one piece of toast and had it set for that and then I moved to two pieces, the two pieces were always way underdone. I cannot believe this actually worked. And now for the ultimate test. I have frozen bagels. Oops. Oh, actually, I forgot that they're frozen. Let's try not to cut my own hand here. Oh, awesome. Let's try this again, shall we? I found a knife. <laughs> I should always cut bagels with a chef's knife. Oh, this is a terrible idea. Somewhere I have a bread knife. <laughs> it's just not being used right now. Okay. Now, frozen bagel time. Ah, sit in there. There we go. Okay. Let's see what happens. In case you're not aware, there is a bagel button on most of these toasters that causes only the heating elements on the inside to turn on during the toasting process. That allows you to just toast one side of your bagel, as I suppose is traditionally done. I'm just going to press the lever down and hope for the best to see what happens. I don't know if it will toast long enough. Supposedly, the frozen button on most of these inexpensive toasters just allows the toasting process to go on for longer. I'm not gonna hit that. So we're gonna see what happens. Oh man, this is doing some funky stuff. I saw it down to the 60s earlier, and then it bounced back up to the 90s. It really doesn't know what to do with these bagels. I've never used bagels before in the training process. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, I can't believe this works. These were frozen bagels. These things are notoriously hard to, to toast. Okay, without obviously pushing the frozen and bagel button on your toaster, but um, you know, I think a little piece of it here hit the heating element and I can't do much about that, which probably caused the sensors to think it was a little more burn than it was, but I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out. I cannot believe it handled bagels. This, this is, this is impressive. This does prove to be a very interesting use case when we start talking about predictive maintenance. And that's the idea of, can we figure out when something is about to go bad before it actually does? Because burnt toast is irreversibly damaged. We can't use it. So can we predict just before that happens, at that perfect doneness, and then stop the process there? Think about this from the perspective of a giant machine where we want to know before something breaks. We would use a process like this, maybe not gas data, but we would want to sense when something's about to break to notify an operator that something doesn't look quite right. 
you need to go in and fix it before something really gets damaged. And so we're just applying predictive maintenance to toast. I think this is amazing. I am so excited that this works. It works better than I thought it was going to, minus a couple of hot spots and uneven toasting. But with that, as usual, happy hacking and happy toasting. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's a good bagel.